Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. And I have blessed God because of the things he's been guiding us, the knowledge he's been bringing to our hearts. Now, from the beginning of this month, we began to talk about teach me how to pray. And we are trusting the spirit of God because he has said this is the month of prayer. The kind of prayer he's doing is the one he is working on us tuning us our minds to be in the right frequency with god so the lord says walk on being praise god and i'll encourage you to listen to if you can listen from the first of the month please do if not then listen from monday this week and let these messages be a blessing to you in the course of the week i also had to talk about the issue on tithing and if one will make heaven without titan, I addressed that on Monday. Praise God and, and, and thank God for his wisdom, his, his revelation on these things. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Our theme scripture is Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I've been saying this to you, that if you are fainting, you are not praying. Fainting doesn't mean falling down and be gasping for breath. Faint, fainting here simply means giving up giving up if you've been holding faith if, you, if you've been trusting god for something and your faith is out there and then you get to that point where you say it's like this thing is not working okay i can't i can't do this again it's simple you are fainting and the reason you're fainting is because you have not been praying jesus said Pray so that you don't faint. Now, it doesn't mean your prayer point should be, Oh God, don't let me faint. Oh God, don't let me faint. That's when you will not faint. No. If you are participating in praying, you will not faint. Why? I spoke to you about this last week. Because angels will minister to you. That's one of the benefits of prayer. And what do you think angels minister to you? Strength. Strength consigning that thing that you are praying or believing God for. So the moment you see yourself fainting, just like the Bible lets us know that if you faint in the day of adversity, the reason is not because God did not answer you. The reason is because your strength was small. And we read in scriptures that angels ministered strength to Jesus and angels would also minister strength to us. And this happens in the place of prayer. When Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed. And, and, and that's one moment Jesus almost fainted. But then when he prayed, the Bible said angels came and ministered to him. Now, because he was praying right. See, he was praying right. He wasn't praying a selfish prayer, although... He almost went into that selfish mode. But then he was quick enough. You remember he was saying, oh God, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Because he was looking at the weight of the assignment before him. So he said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he was quick to say, nevertheless, don't do this because of my will. Let your own will be done. This is what happens when we pray. We receive ministrations of angels. They are available. The Bible says we are in an innumerable company of angels. We are right in their midst. People don't understand the ministry of angels. These are beings that God has set in place for our own benefit. They are here to help us. Let me read, let me read Hebrews. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You need to know these things for yourself. 
verse chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, and verse let me start from verse 13. It says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies, until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Then verse 14 says, Are they not all? Talking about the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Everyone created by God is an heir of salvation. Whether they have received salvation or they have not received salvation, they are, as long as your name is in the book of life, you are an heir of salvation. And here it says, ministering angels are ministering spirits that have been sent for to minister for you. Now that's where the ministry of strengthening you comes. See, they, they wait on us, you know, like a waiter in the restaurant. You, you find a waiter, he is there, but his eyes are on you. That's how angels are. So they look at the things that you need and then they minister it for you. That's what they do. So that's what we found in Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. Angels came and they were ministering. An angel, but there appeared an angel strengthening him. Angels minister strength to us. Angels minister strength to us. I, 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 I've had that experience, you know, it happened years ago. I was preaching and I sensed there was a being moving around with me. It was so real. I sensed it so strong. And I was wondering, what's he doing? What, what does he want to do? Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. I, 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 now, I've, I've had that feeling many times. Now, of course, after the first experience, and then when the knowledge of God came to me concerning it, I, I understood. And then dramatically, something happened that made me really understand it. Now, I was ministering and I just sensed the presence of this big guy, you know, somehow behind me. And not just standing behind me as I was moving around, I, I noticed he was moving with me. Now, not like I stunned and I saw him. You know, your, your spiritual perception, they are so real. Okay, they are so real. Sometimes you can actually tell the exact spot where some beings are around you. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell. I, I remember many years ago, I was, I was walking home from school. And I was just walking down the road and I was singing a song. And while I was singing that song and just worshiping the Lord, my heart was just stirred up. I was just so glad. Then suddenly, I heard a background sound like a choir singing with me. That, that sound was, I mean, the melody they gave to the song I was singing was just wow. And, and I was conscious that there was, there, was, there was like a choir following me. And we're all just singing and going and singing and going. But in this day, I, I, I just sensed this man. He was just, just walking around with me. And, and everywhere I turn, he will follow. Everywhere I turn, he will follow. I was, I was like, okay, Lord. I knew it was an angelic being. I knew. I was not in doubt about that. But I, I was like, okay, so what's it there doing? What, what, what does he want to do? Does God want, is this place about to explode? You know how you, we reason that? Is, is, I was just waiting for an instruction from the Lord to say, start healing the sick or start doing something. Praise God. But then it was just a camp meeting. I was like, okay, so did I miss, you know how you finish a meeting and then you go before the Lord and like, did I miss something? Is there something you wanted to do that I didn't do? But then there was no correspondence from the Lord concerning that. And then a few weeks later, not so long from that experience, a few weeks later, I was listening to Kenneth Copeland preach. And he told them of an experience that he was preaching. And he noticed someone in the congregation was just looking at him like, in amazement, you know, just looking and looking. So he was wondering, like, is there something wrong with me? You know how you're preaching? And, and you're wondering, is there something wrong? Is there something on my hair? Is, it's something wrong. Making him, he was quite uncomfortable through that um, message. But, you know, he had to compose himself. Until after the service, this guy came to meet him and said, Hey, sir, I, 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 I want to tell you something. He said, what is it? Do you know the guy that is always walking with you when you're preaching. 
He said, what guy? He said, there's a guy that, that was all around you everywhere you go. He follows you. And then I noticed that sometimes he would bend and whisper something to you. And then you would just like, like he, he just pumps fire in you. Like, like your preaching is going down and suddenly I'll see him whisper something to you and then you will just start again and, and just keep going. Now, when I heard him say that, like, yes, now I know what that man was doing. Praise God. You understand what I'm talking about? Why we receive strength from angelic beings. Now, this is, as a child of God, there are, there are spiritual experiences that you're supposed to be having. That's what tell that you, you, you function in two worlds. You function here in this world and then you function from heaven also. See? So these things are real. But how would you walk in them if you don't pray? Now, I've said a lot of things to you, even this week. And those things come from spiritual knowledge. How do angels strengthen you? They don't come with some machines and then they try to pump in strength inside your physical body. No, they strengthen you with words. They strengthen you with words. So I, now, I, like I was saying, when, when, when I heard Kenneth Copeland share that, I'm like, yeah, I know. Even when I preach, it happens. And sometimes you're talking about something and you just, like, like the scripture just dropped in your heart. You're talking about some learning. It's scripture just drops in your heart. John chapter 5, verse 46. And then you go, okay. And you're so sure of it. Not with your physical senses. Because after that message, you, you're like, how did I know that John chapter 4 and verse 46? <laughs> Do you understand? But while you're preaching, there's so much accuracy in you. And you just quote it. Open your Bible. And then they open, and when you read, he said, this exactly confirms what I'm talking about. Now, what happened? It was the angel that ministered that word, and, and that's when he infused strength inside of me. It's the same thing. You're praying concerning something. You're standing in faith concerning something. When you get to the point where it looks like you are giving up, strength is ministered into your heart. A scripture just drops in you and said, yes! And sometimes we're praying and praying. The same thing happens when you're praying. Literally praying and praying and praying and praying, oh Father. Then suddenly you hear a scripture will just drop in you, and then you go, Yeah, kabayado, ra kabayadaba. You understand know, what I'm saying? So that when we pray for long, without this help, your praying for long will be very boring, you'll give up. And sometimes, not because we say, I'm going to pray for two hours, I'm going to pray for this long. No. You just start out praying. Personally, I don't set time for my prayer. No, not now. There are times, you know, you pray all night and pray all night and pray all night and pray all night. And then you grow to the point where you, you, you understand that the purpose of prayer is fellowship. And if I spend 30 minutes, 45 minutes to one hour, I'm not feeling that connection in that fellowship. The, the, the media thing I want to do is say, okay, Lord, it's like you're not interested in this business right now. <laughs> so let, let's pause it. Now, I know there are people who want to rather go on. That prayer itself is an exercise. Okay? And at every stage of your life, there are things you would do. There are practices you would that would help you. Like, like you see, our spiritual work, you must, you must notice that... At different stages, there are things that you must imbibe. All things are for your sake. You understand what I'm saying? So there are periods in your life where praying for long will, will, will be so good. And, and most times when you pray for long like that, you don't even receive anything. I didn't say all the time. Most times in practice, you, you realize that I prayed for two hours. I prayed for three hours. Nothing. You know, I'll just rakabaya, rakababa. Sometimes we'll set the time and, and you know, I've just done 30 minutes. Leko, no, today I must do three hours. Raki poda veke now. But you see, what you're actually doing is exercise. At such time, the Holy Ghost may never say anything. Now, he didn't say nothing. He didn't say anything, not because he was not participating in your prayer. Remember, you were exercising yourself. You were exercising yourself. So most times, he will not even interfere. Oh, I've, I've, I've done long fast and throughout that fast, nothing, no revelation, nothing. And even when you're done, you'll be wondering, did I waste my time? But, but from experience, you realize that 
after that season, you will begin to enter into pains. For example, after that season, revelation will just start coming to you. Not when you're even fasting. Now, there are other times when you're fasting, the Lord will tell you something, okay? He will tell you, so it depends on what you're fasting for. If you're definitely fasting for something, I've always said this. When you pray, the best prayer points, please listen to me. The best prayer points or the first prayer point you always have in your heart when you pray is, Lord, how do I pray about this? And that's in line with what James said. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Okay? So you want to know exactly. And, and when, you, when, you, when that becomes your attitude, you will notice that sometimes you're praying and then the Lord will even give you the exact prayer points to pray. I experience that a lot. The Lord will tell you, pray like this. And when I do, I see supernatural occurrence, supernatural interventions. But the moment you set your heart to pray for long, this is from my own experience, okay? The moment you set your heart to pray, I'm going to pray for one hour. I'm going to pray for two hours. I'm going to pray till morning. I realize that most times the Spirit of God is just, He's there, but He doesn't get involved. Yeah. So when you hear me say, I, I've, I've grown to the point where I don't set time. I, I just go before the Lord and Lord, I begin to fellowship with him. I begin to fellowship with him. Now that fellowship, he can take over that fellowship and I'll be there for two, three hours. Okay. Now I'm fellowshipping with him. I don't even remember time is gone. See, or sometimes I can start out, start out to pray. Oh, it's time to pray. You know, you wake up in the night, you want to pray. And as you kneel down to pray, he takes over and he begins to give instructions. And by the time he's done with you instructing, you've just gone five minutes into your prayer time. And then you want to pray like you have an instruction before you. You're now thinking, okay, how do I? So you spend the time meditating and coming up with a structure in your mind on how to execute what the Lord is saying to you to execute. So, I want us to understand that prayer is not just the rakababa rokobe meneke de Sometimes we are before him and we're quiet. We're just silent. You're silent. You're still praying, but you're silent. The most important thing is the fellowship that takes place. And, and when I tell people about prayer, if you don't get this in prayer, your prayer will almost become useless. If you don't realize that you, prayer time is fellowship time with a divine personality. If I'm in fellowship with a divine personality, just like when I'm in fellowship with a human being, I expect an interaction. So when, you're, when you set your heart to pray, your mind should be thinking of the interaction that is going to take place during that prayer. So your heart must be ready to receive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Oh, next week is going to be great. I'm telling you the truth. And I pray for you this weekend. That you will give yourself to the Spirit of the Lord. That He will strengthen. He will energize your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I say, young man, you're, you're really getting weak in your spirit. You're watching me right now and truly you're just telling yourself all these things is there was the need of all these things. That's that's the thoughts and these are the thoughts that have been in your heart. The truth is you're giving up and you know you're giving up. You've just been a Christian for so long you don't know what other life to live. And that's where you are but then in your heart you are giving up. Because while you're listening to me, you're just like, what's the point for all these things? That's what you're thinking. And meanwhile, you've, 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 you're almost like one who, who will be called a pastor. You love God, but it just seems everything has become dry. I pray for you today. The Spirit of God is telling me that your light is just before you. Your light is just before you. What that means is, don't give up before your light shines. Isaiah said, arise, shine, for your light 
has come. That light is referring to is the light according to Genesis 1.14 that God created the light in the firmament. Let them be for signs and seasons and day. Your light is about to rise. That's what I hear the Spirit of God say. Your light is about to rise. And I see God doing with you in a few months time some mighty works. And so Satan is bringing these distractions in your heart to weaken you so that by the time the Lord brings his instruction, you'll be too paralyzed to even believe God. You're listening to me, you're wearing a white shirt. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for you that the Holy Ghost will, will set again your heart on fire, even as you submit to him. Yes, open your mouth, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Something is going to happen to your tongue. Something is going to happen in your spirit right now. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. God is surely doing something in your life. Praise God. My time is up and I'm surely going to see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you.